Official dietary guidelines around the world recommend that at least 75% of your plate consists of unprocessed whole plant foods. Many dietary guidelines agree that going for close to 100%, thus eating a well-planned whole food vegan diet, is suitable for all stages of life, including pregnancy, infancy and childhood, and might even offer some benefits in regards to chronic degenerative diseases. We did cover various critical nutrients in previous videos, so in this video we want to talk about which whole plant foods to choose to fill most of your plate. Let's start! Macronutrients – Water Content The different whole plant food groups – vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes and nuts and seeds – offer different sets of nutrients, not only in terms of macronutrients, also in terms of micronutrients and phytonutrients. Let's start by looking at the most important macronutrient, water. The water content of a food item is the strongest predictor of its satiation potential. Apart from nuts and seeds, whole plant foods offer the highest water content of all foods in existence. People often look at food items only in terms of their carbohydrate, protein and fat content. This results in various crazy fat diets, such as if it fits your macros. Proper nutrition is not about hitting a certain macronutrient ratio. Protein bars, protein powder or special protein-rich foods are not necessary, nor particularly health-promoting. Macronutrients – Energy When it comes to carbohydrates, protein and fat, the macronutrient profiles of the different food groups vary greatly. But also within food groups, the macronutrient profiles can vary, especially looking at overt fat sources like olives and avocados. Within the legume food group, chickpeas and especially soy are much higher in fat than other beans. It's a good idea to have some variety, not only between food groups, but also within those food groups. This does not only affect macronutrient ratios, but also ensures an adequate intake of most vitamins and minerals. Not to forget the unique set of phytonutrients each plant food provides. Macronutrient Profiles these graphs show the average macronutrient profiles of the different food groups. We can see that only relying on one arbitrary food group is not going to result in a proper macronutrient ratio. It is the mixture of all food groups that will automatically result in a healthy macronutrient ratio of about 70-80% to of calories from carbohydrates, 10-15% to of calories from protein and 10-20% to of calories from fat. The carbohydrate and fat content can vary the most because they heavily depend on the consumption of overt fats and nuts and seeds. Micronutrients The different food groups also provide different micronutrients. Some are higher in certain vitamins, some are higher in certain minerals. A mixture of vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes and nuts and seeds will provide a great variety of vitamins and minerals. Whole plant foods are the most nutrient-dense foods in terms of micronutrients per calorie. Still, there are some critical nutrients that need to be addressed. Most of these are not specific to a whole food plant-based diet, but are also critical in most other dietary patterns. Critical nutrients Number 1. Vitamin B12 Taking a supplement is important. Watch our video on B12 for more information. Number 2. Iodine If you use salt, Go for iodized salt. Include a variety of sea vegetables into your diet, such as nori, wakame, etc. Number 3. Calcium. If you drink plant-based milk alternatives, use those with added calcium. The best calcium sources are non-oxalate-rich green leafy vegetables and legumes. Number 4. Omega-3. Include a tablespoon of ground flax or chia seeds into your daily diet. Be aware of omega-6 rich foods in your diet, such as sunflower products and processed foods in general. If you want to ensure an adequate supply of EPA and DHA, consider taking an algae-based supplement. Number 5. Selenium If you live in a region with selenium-depleted soil, ensure proper selenium intake. A supplement might be necessary. Some orientation It is good to aim for eating from all food groups every single day. Still, this is not very specific. Eating a bit from every food group, but most calories from nuts won't cut it. We also do not need balance. Looking for balance in nutrition often results in unhealthy dietary patterns. For example, people trying to balance all three macronutrients, or people trying to balance healthy whole plant foods, 
with carcinogenic meat products. Good advice is to fill half of your plate with fresh fruits and vegetables, about a quarter with whole grains and the last quarter with protein-rich legumes. This fits well with official dietary guidelines, the only difference being that the last quarter is often described as protein without specifying the source. Even more specific, Gregor's Daily Dozen. If you are interested in more concrete advice, check out the app Daily Dozen by Dr. Michael Gregor MD from nutritionfacts.org. It provides a checklist of specific dietary targets based on the best available scientific evidence on healthy nutrition. These targets include three portions of legumes, one portion of berries, three portions of other fruits, one portion of cruciferous vegetables, two portions of leafy vegetables, two portions of other vegetables, one tablespoon of ground flax seeds, a handful of nuts, spices, three portions of whole grains, five large glasses of water, movement. Our personal experience when we started using the app, we only checked off about 11 out of the 24 boxes. We quickly noticed that we were not eating cruciferous and green leafy vegetables on a regular basis. We were not consistent in ground flax seeds, berries, spices and movement. It is not important to check off all 24 boxes every day. The app simply provides some orientation on which foods to include into your diet on a regular basis. Still, there are some low-hanging fruits pun intended, to check off every day without much effort. For example, berries, fruits, ground flax seeds, a handful of nuts, spices and proper water intake. 24 boxes a day. If you go for oatmeal in the morning, add some frozen berries, cut fruits, ground flax seeds, a few nuts and some spices like ginger powder and cinnamon, and you will easily check off 8 boxes. Some fresh veggies with hummus? Another four boxes. Snack on a piece of fruit. Check. Lentil soup including cruciferous and green leafy veggies with a slice of whole grain bread? Might be another five boxes. Drink plenty of water and go for a long walk and you will check the last six boxes. Again, you do not need to follow this checklist religiously. Use it for a few days to notice in which areas you could improve in. But don't stress too much about it. Thanks for watching our video. How many boxes do you think you can check off? Let us know in the comments. See you again next week.